the Oracle Mobile Cloud Service Storage API that it presents data as a collection of objects based around REST resources and their operations. It's important for mobile developers to understand what they can actually do with the REST API. For example, can we call get on a collection of objects? And if MCS returns 100 objects, does MCS provide any REST API features to say paginating through the records? I mean, in the end, what's the real power behind the MCS storage API? That's what we're going to investigate in today's Oracle Mobile Cloud Service episode. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. So in considering the storage APIs, collections and objects, let's run through the different endpoints and operations that are available to you. So firstly, the base path for all storage API HTTP operations is your base URL of your MCS instance, forward slash mobile, slash platform, slash storage, slash collections. Now, as there are several further resources under this base path, to stop myself getting tongue-tied during this presentation, I'll just abbreviate this to the storage URL slash collections. And what you can do is then substitute back that full path on the slide that you can see here. Great, so with that out of the way to make my job easier here to communicate to you the URLs, let's now consider the HTTP operations available for the overall storage API and what they allow you to do. So firstly, the storage API allows you to issue a GET on the base storage URL slash collections. Now, this returns a list of all the collections available to the current mobile user, as well as the metadata about each collection. Alternatively, if you already know the name of a collection, you can use the head request to query the resource forward slash collections forward slash collection name to determine if the collection identified by the name really does exist. Now, this will return a HTTP 200 status code if it does and a 404 error code if it doesn't. The final operation of the collections themselves is issuing a get on the resource forward slash collection, forward slash collection name. Now, in this case, it will return the metadata for that collection alone. Beyond collections, you have a similar set of operations for the objects contained within each collection that we'll now look at. First, if you execute a get on collections, the collection name then objects, you will receive all the metadata for all the objects associated with that collection. It's worth pointing out that you don't get the objects themselves, just the metadata. From here, if we issue a post on the same URL, this allows us to create an object in the collection. Note that this operation specifically does not allow you to specify your own object ID for the object. In this case, MCS will allocate one for you. If you want to supply your own object ID, you need to use the put command we'll talk about in a moment. Like collections, if you need to check if an object exists or has been updated, you can use the head operation on the URL collection, name, objects, object ID. If you know the object exists or you're willing to handle a 404 status error code, if it doesn't, the get operation will retrieve the object for you via collections, names, object ID. Note that this returns the actual object itself, such as a file or JSON document. The return payload will not include any metadata about the object. And from here, the put command with the same URL allows you to upload as part of the payload an update to a specific object where you also define the object ID in the URL. If the object already exists, it will simply be overwritten. If the object doesn't exist, well, it will create it for you. And finally, guess what? The delete operation allows you to delete the object specified in the URL based on the object ID. In order for a mobile application to access the collections and objects, not only does it need to know the associated URIs or URLs, but the mobile application user must also have privileges to access those resources. So for shared collections, user roles can be granted read or read write privileges on the collection exposed through the mobile backend. For shared collections, it's important to remember that mobile users who can access a shared collection when these permissions are granted to one of their roles will see and be affected by changes made by other users on the objects in MCS. Now, for isolated collections, mobile users' roles must also be granted the read or read-write privileges to access their own instance of a collection. In other words, mobile users do not have implicit privileges on their own isolated collection instance, even though they implicitly own it. You need to grant one of those privileges. Finally, there is a set of special privileges for allowing a specific role to access records in another user's isolated collection, specifically the privileges read or and read write or. 
Now this allows a privileged set of users to access all data in an isolated collection regardless of who owns it as long as they know the user ID. For example, if we take well an example from an earlier episode where we had a spelling app for students called Spellwalls that allows them to upload avatar pictures into an isolated collection, it might still be appropriate to give read write all privileges to a teacher role so that teachers can check for any inappropriate avatar pictures students have uploaded. Besides storing objects, MCS along with the data at hand also stores metadata. Now the metadata for collections, not objects, but collections includes an ID, a description, a content length in bytes, and an e-tag. Now most of this is self-explanatory, you agree, but besides maybe the e-tag. Now you could be already familiar with what the e-tag is, but if not, briefly the e-tag or entity tag is a version identifier of the H3 resource you're querying. Each time that resource is updated, the e-tag, and this is the important bit, is changed itself. So the purpose of the e-tag allows an external consumer, say our mobile applications in this case, to store the e-tags between queries. And instead of having to download the entire data from a HP resource each time to see if there's any updates, you can instead issue a HP head call on a resource and compare the previous e-tag you stored in the last request. If the e-tag is the same, you're saved from a potentially expensive HP get call to fetch down the data you've already got a copy of. But if it's changed, only then do you fetch the updated records in a set in a subsequent get request. Now it's worth noting as the e-tag is a version identifier on a specific HP resource, it doesn't make sense to compare the e-tag for different HP resources out there. E-tags are one of the essential mechanisms on the internet to stop applications including our mobile applications from continuously downloading the same content again and again, massively saving bandwidth, preventing draining our mobile's battery, and also avoiding potentially slow interactions with servers across poor cellular networks supported by our mobile applications. It's also worth, also worth noting that e-tags, as per the HP 1.1 spec, are optional. So a server doesn't have to return an e-tag at all. In this case, you've no choice but to fetch the data down again or consider not using that server in the first place for critical mobile applications. But here's the thing, MCS does. So MCS works as a really nice intermediary for providing this optimization for your mobile applications. Right, so returning to the discussion on metadata beyond collections, MCS itself also stores metadata on all the objects stored within the collection. Interestingly, we can actually see this via the MCS user interface itself by visiting the storage API pages and clicking on the content option. Here you can see for these objects I've uploaded earlier, the relative metadata properties for that specific object. Now you'd agree that most of these fields are pretty self-explanatory, like the content length, created by, created on, modified by and on, as well as the e-tag that you're now familiar with. In addition, you might note there is both an ID and a name property. Hmm, aren't they the same? Now, when you look at these values in the MCS user interface, these are typically the same value, where you've supplied an ID and then they're used for both, or MCS supplies an object ID and again, they're used for both. However, alternatively, during a HTTP request, you can also use the HP header oracle-mobile-name HP header to customize the object's name separate to the ID. Now this is provided to you to allow you to let the MCS generate an object ID for you, but also have your own naming scheme for the objects too, as a convenience. Right, the next property is the self-link property, which provides a relative URI to the object for the current user. Essentially, its goal is to save a program from having to calculate the URI path itself. From here, alternatively, the canonical link, or canonical link, depending on which part of the world you live in, is used for objects in a user's isolated data collection, where you've granted access to the user's isolated data collection to another mobile user with the read all or read write all privileges. Now, this URI specifically includes the isolated data collection's user identifier so that the privileged user can access what are normally protected objects in the collection. Great, so now that you have a handle on the REST APIs for the storage API, as well as the underlying metadata for the collections and objects, you're really in a good position then to learn about some of the extended functionality that MCS provides via the storage API to make working with the collection and objects easier and actually more powerful. So as an example, one challenge developers often hit when accessing a collection of objects from a HP resource 
is that the http resource wants to return thousands of records which will overwhelm your limited mobile bandwidth and memory and besides the user may only want to look at the first five records or maybe the first 10 records and so you're going to waste valuable bandwidth cpu time and storage on the device too to combat this, the MCS storage collection allows you to add HTTP query parameters to limit or paginate over the results. So in order to do this, to limit the results, you add the limit parameter set to the maximum number of records to display. To provide pagination, in addition to the limit parameter, you include the offset parameter as follows. So what this allows us to do is to query the 10 records, but not starting at the first record, but instead starting at the 20th record. If you're interested in all the objects in a collection, say created by a specific user, you can query using the Q parameter as follows. Now the Q parameter is a little bit unique in that it doesn't specify a metadata field to search. Rather, it will automatically search the ID, name, created by, and modified metadata fields on your behalf. So as you can see in this example, we're going to search for all records that were either created by, or modified by, or have the ID or name of JDoe. Another challenge for developers is when they receive a large data set back from a HTTP core, but it's not ordered correctly. Sorting can cost a lot of CPU cycles on a mobile device and a lot of battery power too. So ideally, the mobile developer wants the data pre-sorted when they fetch it. So the expensive sort operation is done on the server side, which has more CPU cycles. NCS supports this by inclusion of the order by query parameter, such as order by content length. And as you can see here, we can include colon either ascending or descending to change the sort order based on that particular metadata field. Finally, the total results parameter, if included, adds an additional field of the same name to the resulting payload, telling you how many records are in the collection. If you combine the total results parameter with the limits parameter, note that the total result value is for the entire collection and will not reflect the limit parameter value. It's also worth noting that the total results parameter will have a performance impact while MCS counts the number of objects available in the collection. So you don't always want to use this, particularly if the collection has thousands and thousands of records. Great, so now by this episode, I think you're starting to get a little bit of an idea how we're providing these mobile optimized services out of MCS that have lots of little optimizations such as the e-tag, the query parameters like limit and offset, all to make that interaction of your mobile application with MCS faster. These may be not capabilities you have with your on-premise solutions, and this is why mobile cloud service really shines. Stick with us in a couple of the next videos where we're gonna look at more storage API capabilities, Hope you've enjoyed this video today. We'll see you in that next episode, hopefully very soon.